how do we rise above ego so it's a very interesting question and <laughs> the thing is you know rising above ego is the second thing but discerning ego is what is the most difficult part because ego is this sense of self this false sense of self that we acquire in when we come from the copper age so this false sense of self that we acquire on this journey is ego but the thing is when we uh, come to the end by the time we come to the end of the journey ego is ego is all that i am so you know we have absolutely no true sense of self there is just this false sense of self so ego is my identity ego is my personality ego is everything so uh, and you know the other day i was reading a quotation it was very beautiful that in order to meet the new you you have to completely let the old you die but this new you is precious uh but the thing is you see that this new you is something very new and all that i know about myself is the complete opposite of who i really am and i identify with that self so much that you know uh, letting go of it is quite scary so uh, you know when you start letting go of it then it becomes like uh, it is almost like you are letting go of your whole identity whole old identity and um, that is a very big process and uh, from my own experience i will tell you that you know when we come into gyan it's um, things are very easy so you know uh, when you come into gyan so uh, you feel that you know this is wrong about me or this is not okay about me or this sanskar is not good so maybe complaint maybe anger maybe uh, irritation maybe uh, you know you have the sanskar of putting down somebody or you have the sanskar of being lazy so there are some sanskars which you don't like about yourself and then you start working on them and you start changing them and it makes you very happy and uh, that part is easy because that part is something which uh, you know is not resonating with you but the bigger problem arises <laughs> <laughs> after you have done away with that part and then there is a part of you which is not you but it is so ingrained in you now that you identify it with identify with it like your personality and you don't want to let go of it yes so uh, let's say uh you know this thing that um i am always right and uh, you know you take a lot of pride in uh your uh, the power of your intellect and the power of making good choices and uh you think that you know you have this good intellect functional intellect which always guides you in the right way and then you know that intellect is um that intellect is something you are very proud of that intellect is something that you value a lot uh, 
because uh, you think that that is what makes you you and um, you know anybody who knows you tells you that you know it's very difficult to make you accept that you are wrong <laughs> so anybody who tells uh, who knows you that's how they look at you and then uh, this being rigid or stubborn or this being um, this is being you for you right now Baba says that um, you don't have to go about go after who is right go after what is right right and then you say no I'm only going after what is right I'm not going after who is right but I'm right I, I can't help it I'm right all the time <laughs> so you say you twist Baba's teachings and you will say that you know who is going after who is right I am only going after what is right and the thing is I am right so I am going after that so but the thing is uh, that's a part of you which is not able to make you see that whatever choices you are making is creating a lot of damage in the long run so let's say you know there's this thing where you live in a family and then uh, there is a uh, so the choices you are making because you think you are right is um, uh, is not is not good for your relationships in the long run yes and then but you still may keep making those choices saying that I am right and the other people are wrong but the thing is if you are so right then why are you not able to function in a manner where you will be able to take every, everybody along so you know it's not like everybody will be happy with you or I'm not talking about everybody being uh, you know uh, being very happy with you I'm just talking about you know why do you have to reject people because of that or why do people uh, feel left behind because of that yes so if you are right and if you know how to uh, so you know if you are right then you can make things right right so if you can't make things right if you can't uh, if you can't take everybody along so maybe everybody doesn't agree with you maybe everybody is not happy with you because you are making some choices based on Srimad but at least you know if you are a good person then nobody will want to let you go but the thing is you see that uh, you know sometimes our ego is so inflated that um, we don't understand the, the, the line between being right and uh, being egoistic so you know Baba says do the right thing but do it with love and humility Baba never says uh, don't do the right thing do the right thing but do it with love and humility it's not like Baba says you're making a right choice so don't communicate with anybody so you know if you're if you're even if you're making a right choice so just communicate with the other soul just tell them what is in your mind and heart even if they don't agree with you that's okay but don't discard them because you think that uh, you know this person is a fool and they will never understand so you know there are uh, so these are things about us because you know we are also living in a world where our ego is making us make presumptions our ego is making us you know reject people in our minds and then you just keep say keep going about you know I don't know how to deal with these people because they don't get what I'm saying and I'm right but the thing is if you're so right then where is the love where is the where is the compassion where is the humility where is the sweetness and if you did everything with compassion humility love sweetness then even if somebody doesn't agree with you even if they will not walk the path you walk 
they they may walk distant from you but they will not they will not leave you so you know you may be like parallel lines but you can still walk together so that's the kind of things that uh, you know we don't want to let go because these are some things in our personality which we hold very tightly on to and you see that uh, this ego self that we have developed or maybe you know very deep attachments everything is a part of ego so very deep attachments and you know um, there are some some places where you are not attached so or um, you are very uh, you know you are you think you are attached but you are not attached and you let go of that very easily but there is somewhere you know with some person you are very deeply attached and then there is that uh, soul sustenance coming from that person <laughs> so you know it's uh, that that one person is the foundation of your emotional health and uh, suddenly you know um, so you uh, and the thing is you you take it like uh, you know it's okay to be attached to that this person and uh, it is this relationship so let's say it's a spouse or it's a child and parent relationship and then you think that you know it is normal and natural and then most of the time it is working fine also so most of the times the attachment is both ways so because most of the time the attachment is both ways it's very difficult to figure out that it is attachment but then there are moments when your attachment is not reciprocated the same way as you want it to be reciprocated and then you uh, in those moments you come to understand you know you have a glimpse of how much that upsets you <laughs> and you have a glimpse of you know how much that causes a turmoil inside you but then uh, you think that you know um, okay and then you know it suddenly fizzles out because again the person comes back to you and they start being equally attached but the thing is do you understand that there's a part of you which is very very weak so there's a part of you which is uh, very weak and we need to work on it because Baba says that you have to be free from lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed. So uh, we kind of you know uh, we partially become free from lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed but I don't know whether we totally become uh, free from that <laughs> because you know the surface level cleaning uh, if you clean a dish you know which is uh, very dirty so have you seen those utensils in the kitchen especially the kadhai it becomes very uh, layered <laughs> after a point of time and cleaning it on the surface is very easy so you know you just clean it on the surface and then it looks clean also and it looks like it can be used but the thing is there's so much dirt which which looks like it has become part of the kadai <laughs> so <laughs> that dirt is not dirt now it is part of that utensil so it's that dirt i am talking about and you know that dirt is so much there in our uh, in the soul that it is now it defines your personality and then you cannot even think about yourself without that attachment or that uh, sense of being right or you cannot think about yourself without that particular identity so that becomes a very difficult thing so you know let's say being authoritative which is um, being authoritative but um, there is no balance so you are always authoritative and uh, you have taken on this uh, persona of an angry young man or an angry young woman or 
angry old man or angry old woman and then you live with that this personality and that is kind of your protection into you know uh, where you don't want people to invade into that part of you which you are guy guarding through that facade of anger so you know you come across as very angry because basically you have very less tolerance and then you want to uh, keep people in their place by just uh, you know by just uh, gay, you, you know what do you say by just um, having this personality of anger and you want people to not approach you very closely because you have very less tolerance very less acceptance you know you are not able to have sanskar milan with souls and then you don't want to give up on this personality you don't want to work on this because you think that you know it is fine and uh, i feel that you know everybody is uh, not everybody doesn't match up to me or i don't have to be that approachable but baba says that if somebody is getting a vibe from you stay away <laughs> that's not a good vibe to send right so you are godly children and if you stay sending off this vibe that stay away that's not a good vibe to uh, exude so that's so these are some aspects of our i'm giving you some very stray examples but you have to discern within yourself that part of your ego which is not allowing you to totally follow baba shrimat so you know it's not allowing you to be approachable it's not allowing you to be accepting and loving and kind to everybody it's not allowing you to be uh, you know it's not allowing you to be for ekras it is not allowing you to be in a state of equilibrium even in the face of somebody behaving according to you or against you so these are some aspects and then you know there is this greed in our personality which we camouflage as being financially wise or as being uh, prudent uh, financially or we camouflage this greed as being economical so there is all this greed but the thing is uh, we are not able to follow shrimat and we are not able to use our money for vishwa seva right so that greed is stopping us from doing vishwa seva but we don't understand that greed we think that you know it is my personality that i use money very wisely or but that is not wise <laughs> the wise thing is to use it for vishwa kalyan but the thing is you know where there is ego ego makes you so rigid that you're not able to understand baba shrimat you're not able to appreciate baba shrimat you're not able to follow baba shrimat and uh, you know this all these things are there inside us and then you don't want to let go of it and you turn a blind eye to it also so you don't want to see that side of yours also you you don't even even when we look listen to the murli we don't listen to these points <laughs> so our ego makes us very selective even in our hearing and we don't even listen to these points where baba is talking about adjustment and i remember there was this murli and um, i was reading it out to one sister and in that you know uh, in that murli uh, baba was talking about uh, having ad- the quality of adjustment and working in a group with love and then suddenly she said you know but is it okay if somebody is very difficult and uh, you don't want to waste your time after that so can we just you know uh, just avoid that person <laughs> so so you see that 
as soon as that point comes up where your actual problem lies you will try to avoid that point by coming up with an excuse to not follow that point and uh, then you will also try to ask the nimith uh, questions which will so you know just like when you ask google certain questions you frame it in such a manner that the answer you want will come up so similarly you know uh, that you ask the nimith also in such a manner that you want them to answer in a way you want to hear the answer <laughs> and then she said that you know it's baba has told me told us that 5% you can avoid you know 95% your relationship should be good but if one person is very difficult then uh, can we avoid that person so i said how many members are in the family so she said we are two people in the family and um, uh, i and my husband and my husband is very difficult so i said that makes it 100% of your relationships <laughs> it's not 95 and 5 <laughs> that is 100% of your relationship that's the only relationship that is there so what makes you think that you know that's 5% you are avoiding so she said but he's very difficult so i said okay that's fine he is very difficult is not the problem the problem is you are also equally difficult so you see we say that uh, we say that you know this person is egoistic right but it is your ego which is clashing with the other person's ego that's why you can he- you can see or hear that person's ego right if you have no ego then you nothing clashes and then you are not even perceptive to the other person's ego so but we don't see it and let me make it very clear it is not possible that everybody will agree with you it is not possible that everybody will be very happy with you but it is possible that you get along with everybody so you know just agree to disagree and even if you know everybody is doing their own thing there is a vibration vibrational exchange at the thought level at the vibration level there is an exchange of the energy of respect and love that is possible if i work on myself i may not agree with somebody so you know i may not may not agree to eat the same food as somebody but i can definitely eat on the same table as somebody right so even if we eat our respective food i can have respect for whatever they are eating and i can also eat on the same table they are eating i may remember baba and eat they may remember uh, somebody else and eat they may chat and eat but what stops us from eating together and even if you know somebody is passing comments on you or they are not happy with your choices and they are not accepting it the way you are accepting why does it hurt you you know because you also have that sanskar of being feeling hurt and insulted so if you win over that then even if somebody is passing a comment on something you understand it's just their opinion and they are welcome to their opinion <laughs> and you can be okay with it so that's how it works but the thing is you see and about attachment also you know if if there is attachment you will you will not feel comfortable inside so you know as long as the attachment is not requited or reciprocated in the same manner and uh, it is very difficult for that level of even if you, right now you have that um when as you know every soul uh, evolves devolves or whatever they do according to their purusharth but you will not remain the same person after some time and as you evolve or devolve or as the other person evolves or devolves you will be two different people eventually so maybe 5 years down the line 7 years down the line there will be a difference between who you are and who they are 
and then you know getting along will be very difficult if there is attachment because where there is attachment there is no acceptance you know where there is attachment there is thing there is this very rigid thing about i like you as i want you to be you know and if you are not that way then i don't like you <laughs> and then i push you hard enough to be that person i like but uh, you know when you push somebody you push them away so that's how attachment actually you know uh, when there is a lot of attachment then you push people away eventually and uh, suddenly and you also become scared of yourself about how you behave because of attachment and then you think that it's because of the other person but it's not because of the other person it's because of your own sanskar of attachment and if you uh, instead of dealing with your sanskar of attachment you are dealing with you know pushing that person away <laughs> so you are just uh, you think that i have to deal with this person but no you have to deal with your sanskar of attachment and um, these are the things and then you know greed which is um, just making you spend in the wrong place or just accumulate and amass and there is this thing about greed you know um, greed tells you that even if your whole money is lying around just getting wasted or just get remaining unused that's a better option that using it for a good purpose yes so that's greed and i remember you know there's this one a brother he has a big flat so like some men, very big flat he has and then uh, what he does is he has kept it locked and then he pays a chaukidar to take care of it and clean it and then he doesn't even allow the neighbors to park in front of that flat so he just he puts boulders in front of the flat and then he guards it and um, and then he is he is always angry that somebody tried to shift the boulder and park their car or he is always thinking about you know how uh, people are trying to use it in many ways and then one day he was just he is not into gyan or anything he is he is just a neighbor so one day i was talking to him and then he said that you know everyone is after my flat and <laughs> they keep asking me do you want to sell it do you want to sell it are i don't want to sell it why are people after my life so i said uh, okay i am not asking you to sell it or keep it or whatever but is it not better if it was used than if it was just lying around <laughs> so so you know what he told he said mera makan hai pada rahe jal jaye kya hai so he said that's my property even if it keeps lying around or even if it gets burnt in the fire or you know damaged in the earthquake why do why does anyone care so i was just thinking you see that ego makes you so rigid that you cannot see the sense that if something is available why not use it so you know if it's put to use it's better but ego makes you feel that you know it is mine so let it be damaged but it will not be used because i like it that way and because it is i who has decided that uh, if it is lying around just like that it's better than using it then i will not listen to anybody and then uh, so you see this is how ego works but and baba says that you know again you know ego works in many ways so let's say um, this is one extreme example about the the flat just uh, is vacant but let's talk about another flat which is giving you a rent of maybe 30000 40000 50000 whatever but if that flat is used for seva yes so and even if it's not paying you rent if it is used for seva then how much spiritual income it will make you earn 
but your ego will not make you see it because ego will make you see the currency that you are currently getting and ego will tell you the good wishes that you are getting who who sees those good wishes so you know who knows what is that duaon ki kamai aur punya ka khata and uh, ego will make you say you know the money that is coming is more important so these are aspects of ego which uh, we do not want to see which baba is every but every day trying to show to us but uh, we are just avoiding the mirror or because you know we are blinded by ego we cannot see even when we see in the mirror called the murli we are not able to discern what it is so these are things and you know lust is again you know lust keeps you busy lust is when your thoughts your buddhi your uh, your senses your eyes your ears are all busy just uh, satiating themselves you know that's lust so you know it's all about sensual pleasure and sensual pleasure is something that uh, you know you run after and uh, whether it is food whether it is the tongue whether it is the eyes whether it is the ears whether it is the skin whether it is the mind or the buddhi so you know even some people are stimulating their sensual uh, the you know gratifying their sensual pleasure even through the buddhi <laughs> so you know uh, you are um, reading something which is just feel, making you feel wow and great and nice but that's just your buddhi feeling a wow moment but what is it doing to your life <laughs> so you know that is all kam vikar that is all lust so it is so Uh, look at how much we are just spending all our energies into just gratifying ourselves sensually you know with our mind with our buddhi with our sense organs and baba tells us that leave this so you know even sleep is a part of kam vikar laziness being lazy sleeping more than necessary and just enjoying sleep just enjoying light lying down so all this enjoying is sensual pleasure right so and baba says that um if even if you feed your senses a lot still you know they will remain unfed they will f- feel hungry <laughs> so you cannot feed them enough to feel full so that's how we are operating and you know there's this one mata she shared with me something very nice she sh- she said you know when i was a teenager we had this sofa in our house which did not have cushions so she said we had just this sofa and it was a it was like a bench and um, we it did not have cushions and uh, that was something we had bought after 2 years of you know contemplating over it saving for it and we really loved it and i felt like this is a very prized possession and she st- said from that place now i am in a place where i have the most comfortable safe sofa <laughs> so i don't know what is most comfortable but she said that she said i have paid heavily for the sofa i sit on today but she said you know uh, the discomfort is the same so or greater today it's not like i'm feeling better by sitting on this sofa than i felt uh, by sitting on that sofa maybe that wooden sofa was more comfortable so you see that you run after sensual pleasure but the the hunger of your senses keeps increasing and then the more you try to satiate it with comforts and this and that and with you know feeding your uh, vikar through the skin or through the eyes or through the ears or through intellectual stimulation or through your thoughts and imagination whatever you are trying to do that's not working but we don't want to give up on it 
and we are very rigid about that ego because we think that is who I am. So I think you know the most important aspect of ego is knowing your knowing what ego is and discerning what aspect of ego is there in you and then getting rid, rid of it is very easy. The more you meditate and the more you want to get rid of it, you will get rid of it. But the thing is, if you are trying to protect it, then even God cannot make you get rid of it. Okay, Om Shanti.